Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Derica, and you're watching City Steading Brews. Today we are rough racking Fay Wine. Say that three times fast. All right, to do this, what we're going to do is basically we're just going to get this off the fruit, okay? So let me just move some of this stuff out of the way for a moment. Put it there because I got this big bucket down here that I have to pull up here. Ugh. All right, for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, if you didn't watch the original Fay Wine, shame on you. <laughs> Let me get my notes. But we did this on 2-12, so uh, today is the 25th, so it was exactly 13 days ago that we made this, which means about two weeks. We want to get it off the fruit. There is a lot of fruit in here. Four and a half pounds of apples, 12 ounces of raspberries, four pounds of strawberries, an ounce of, dry, of dried rose petals, and two gallons of apple juice, along with wildflower honey and sugar. Is there anything we didn't put in this one? <laughs> but anyway, the idea is... We don't want to let it sit on all that fruit forever. So I'm going to take the lid off. Let me... All right, so we took the lid off. And now if we find the end of the bag. Oh, there's that one piece that fell out. <laughs> and I'm just draining this roughly. Because anything that comes out, we can actually just pour it right back in. So here we go. One, two, three, go. Ugh. All right. So that'll just go to the side for a moment. Let me go wash my hands. Now, I want to be clear. This is not really considered a true racking. What we're doing is getting it off the fruit. We want to maintain the lease. So I'm actually going to stir it up, and we're going to move it to a two-gallon container. So it's a little bit smaller. I'm guessing we probably have about two gallons of liquid here, so should be good. Before anyone gets worried about oxidization or anything like that, I can hear it degassing. It's just like crazy. So I'm not concerned about that at all. Oh, so I'm just going to try to pour it in here as carefully as I can. All right, so what I want to do is just take a quick reading on this, see how it's going. I don't really expect that it's done yet, but it might be close. Now, as you might recall, this came out at a 1084. I'm thinking it wasn't fully mixed, the stuff, you know, this was our what can go wrong video, right? <laughs> so I'm thinking all the sugars weren't mixed in fully, it was cold, we had temperature changes, all that. Based on the amount of sugars that I know were in everything, I'm estimating it to be like 1110 to 1120, which means 1.110 to 1.120, not the 1.084 that it actually read. And let's see how we did. Um, I need to add a little bit more. This went dry, okay? Which we thought it could because of the yeast used and everything like that. That's as much as I can put in there. Oh, there we go, it's floating now. So what we might end up doing is back sweetening this, but I don't want to do it quite yet. I'd like this to get a little bit more age on it, but it did actually level out. It's at 1.000. My fear at this point is because this is such a small vessel, I want to I want this to age some, we'll back sweeten it another time. So for now, it's just gonna go back under airlock and age. Now you might be wondering why I'm doing that rather than back sweetening right now. I want this to mature just a bit so that we can finally really determine how much sugar to add. Because if we taste it right now, we might not like it very much. It's It smells sharp. It's got a very sharp smell to it, which means it's probably gonna be very strong of alcohol. I put my face in the bucket when we first opened it and it burned me like, it, whoa, it shocked me. I've, I've not had that happen. And I, I know whiskeys of 130, 140 proof. So this is up there for alcohol content. I'm betting you it's fully 14, 15% right now. So we're going to add some sugar to it or some honey to it, depending on how the flavors come out at a later date. That way we can determine what flavor profile we're going to end up with. But for now, I'm going to put the lid back on. Put an airlock back in. A quick word about why it was probably so sharp. If you remember, the primary fruit ingredient in this is apples. And apples are notorious for off-gassing, unpleasant odors. They have a lot of malic acid in them. And that doesn't ferment real well and creates this very sharp uh, smell and flavor in unaged apple ciders. But it'll age out just fine. Yeah. With time, this is going to be fantastic 
fantastic. That's why I want to give it that time before we start modifying it from the original recipe. That's all we got for today, though, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Wow. Oh. Do not put your nose in there and take a smell. The alcohol is like, whoa. I mean, it, it burnt me.